Welcome to Sew You Know. I'm Russell Conti with Sewing Art Center. Today I'd like to show you how to sew in a sleeve on a shirt. I'll show you a couple of really quick and easy techniques to make it flawless the first time. You ready? Let's get to it. For our sleeve technique, you're going to need your two sleeves, of course. I want to show you two different techniques for installing the sleeves. You'll need your shirt put together, sh shirt front to shirt back, and you might recall from one of our previous videos that I showed you how to install the yoke. You'll want good quality thread. Again, my go-to thread is cotton. Good shears to cut out your pattern, of course. Good quality pins. And a size 70 sharp needle for this particular project. The first part of our sewing, we want to run a long stitch from one notch across the shoulder to the other set of notches. And we do that with the longest stitch the machine will make. It's either referred to as a gathering stitch or an ease stitch. And the reason that is is because when you install a sleeve, convention has it that the cap of the sleeve has more fabric in it than the armhole will have on the garment. And so we need to gather this in just a little bit in order to fit successfully. When you start, make certain you leave long thread tails at the very end of the garment so that the, when you gather the fabric up, the threads don't pull out of the stitch. We also want to increase our stitch length to the maximum the machine will make. On this particular machine, that means five millimeters. So I'm going to start right here. And instructions typically will tell you to run the gathering stitch or the easing stitch right on the seam line. I, however, like to sew the easing stitch ever so slightly outside of it toward the edge of the garment or inside of it toward the sleeve so that it's easier to pull out because this is just a temporary stitch in order to help gather up the fabric. Now the cool part of this technique is simply to place your finger behind the foot as the fabric is sewing. This is called ease plussing. If you hold your finger behind the foot, you'll notice the fabric starts to gather up on the, the foot and behind it and onto your finger and then it will continue going until it can't go any further. And then just release it and what will happen is the fabric will pucker ever so slightly. If you find that it's not puckering very much, and in my case it's not, you want to increase your thread tension a little bit and that tends to scare people. However, your thread tension mechanism is typically on the top of the machine and standard thread tension is somewhere between four and six. The higher the number, the higher the thread tension. So in this case, I'm going to run it up to about seven to see if that helps gather up those stitches a little bit more. Still holding my finger behind the foot, letting the fabric gather up behind there, and stopping at my other set of notches. Raise the needle up, take the fabric off of the machine, and again, leave long thread tails. And you'll notice by virtue of having adjusted my thread tension higher that the fabric actually gathers and puckers a little bit more, and so it pulls and rounds the cap. Okay? So we didn't have it occur over here, so what we'll need to do in that case is simply grab one of the threads and tug on it a little bit just to help gather that up. And when you gather it, you want to make certain that you gather it so that it's consistent across the cap. That keeps you from getting any puckers. An inset sleeve actually has the sleeve sewn entirely before it's installed in the garment. You'll find this traditionally on jackets, but you can also do it on a shirt. My seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to set the machine to one quarter inch from the edge of the foot, and I'm going to set my stitch length to the appropriate stitch length for this weight of fabric, in this case, two millimeters. Start at the edge, go sew forward a few stitches, and sew backwards to anchor that stitch, and close our seam up. So we've enclosed the one sleeve, we've sewn up the side seam here, we've gathered across the top to ease the cap. We also want to sew the side seam on the garment to create the inset for the sleeve. Again, my seam allowance is one quarter of an inch. Forward and backward to anchor. And sew your side seam. And if there's ever any question about how to pressure seam allowance, convention has it that we press the seam allowances toward the front of the garment. 
What you want to do is take your sleeve and turn it face out. You want your garment face in. The first step is simply to match up the lower seam on the sleeve to the side seam on the shoulder on the garment. Get those in place first. That'll make your life easier. So that the right sides are facing and we'll pin at the bottom. If you have any question at all, your seam allowances on both the sleeve and the shirt are going to press toward the front of the garment. Now that we've matched at the bottom, we can go ahead and find the shoulder seam. There's a notch up there to indicate it and there's also a notch, in my case, right above the yoke. Side seam here, we've got our two notches on the back of the garment. We have two notches at the back of the sleeve. If you notice when you were placing the sleeve in that you only had one notch on the sleeve, that would mean you were putting in the wrong sleeve. You need to use the other sleeve because one notch always indicates the front of the piece, two notches indicates the back. We'll match up our other notch over here and pin that into place. So from the bottom seam allowance, to the notch point, it'll be a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll go ahead and pin that in place. I tend to go to the center and then put as many pins as I need to in between. Same thing on this side. There'll be no ease from the notch to the lower seam. Find the center. Match up your seam allowances and pin. Now that we have that portion taken into consideration and in place, we can now pin the top of the sleeve cap. So find the center between the shoulder seam and the notch point and pin there. Make certain the balance of the fabric is eased in so that it's consistent across there. You want it to be equal. And in my case, I've got a lot of pins in here, but I'm pinning about every inch or so. Do the same thing on the other side. And in between and pin in between once again. We're ready for sewing. We'll start at the base where the seam allowances are and again we want our seam allowances pressed toward the front of the garment and just ride that up on the sewing machine. My seam allowance is one quarter of an inch and again most garment construction seam allowances you'll find are at five eighths. So be mindful of that and make certain that you are following and paying attention to the garment that you're constructing. And now we'll sew. Again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio as we come across the bottom until we get to the first notch. I want to make sure that my seam allowances match up so I have a tidy finish. And we're at our first notch. Again, as before, just make sure there's no puckering underneath the fabric or in right in front of the needle. If that's the case, then you're going to be safe to continue sewing. If you feel anything at all, check it out, look for it, make certain that there's no fabric that you're getting captured that shouldn't be captured, and continue sewing. Overlap backstitch, take it off the machine. Check our work to see if we see any puckers. This is our gathering stitch or our easing stitch that we did. We call the ease plussing. I'm checking all the way around to make sure that there's no puckering before I 
this side, I'm free to go. We'll check the other side as well. And everything looks good. We'll go ahead and turn it right side out to check our work. And to applaud ourselves for the fine job we did. We're free to pull the basting stitch out. And to continue on our way. At this point, I would do some seam finish on the inside of my garment. In this case, I'll probably use the overlock machine just to tidy it up. You could use pinking shears, you could use a three-step zigzag. Those would be effective finishes as well, but you want to keep this from fraying over time. Thank you for joining us for this edition of So You Know. I'm Russell Conti with Sewing Art Center. I hope the techniques you've learned today have inspired you to sew more and that the sleeve insertion technique you learned will make it that much easier for you to sew that shirt you've always been wanting to sew. If you'd like to contact us for any reason at all, please feel free to do so at SewYouKnow.com or SewingArtCenter.com. Look forward to more videos coming very soon. Thanks.